Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and as you all know Techland just released the new gameplay trailer So we're gonna be doing a breakdown of that footage also guys We're so close to 100k subscribers So do consider subscribing as it helps the channel. All right, let's begin So as soon as the trailer starts you can see Steve driving to the renegades island and right off the bat You will realize this is the same mission that we saw back in 2019 But guys a lot has changed and improved since then the path from which we were going to the renegades island has been changed and looks way better with more filled space Whereas in 2019 footage, the place feels empty. Alright, so the entrance distance to the island has been reduced. The barricade has been changed. The bridge in front has been changed. In fact, the castle has changed in the looks. Honestly, it looks way better now. Plus, the look of watchtowers have been changed too. Also, I forgot to mention this, but Steve has a tattoo now. Anyways, moving ahead, this scene should tell you how much the delay has helped Techland improve this game over time. The survivors and the house inside have changed so much. The whole place looks so different and is now filled with more objects, houses and survivors. In 2019 gameplay, this place looks so different and upon looking from a top angle, this looked too empty. But now in 2022, this place looks like a city in itself. Now moving ahead, we see Colonel pointing gun at Aiden calling him a pilgrim. By the way, if you don't know, pilgrim are those wandering survivors who travel around the world. It's basically a group of outcast survivors. By the way, if you ever wondered what happens if you choose to trust Colonel, well this is where you go after making that choice. Next, we see Juan who seems to be meeting Aiden for the first time. Next, we are inside Bazaar and this looks like a place where you can hang out and have drinks. Next, you see Aiden asking Lawan about a girl named Mia. By the way, Mia is the sister of Aiden Caldwell, just in case if you didn't know. Anyways, Lawan doesn't know about her and then Aiden tells her who Mia is and that's when we get to see Mia for the first time. Also, this flashback scene shows the GRE hospital where they both were kept during their childhood. You can see this similar place in a gameplay video where Hakon was helping Aiden to get him a biomarker. By the way, this scene has changed a lot. First of all, their outfits have been changed. When last year they showed us the scene, Mia drew half heart and completed the other half by placing his and her hand there. But now it's just handprints of both of them. Moving ahead, we see Aiden is being taken away from Mia. And then the scene switches to a girl that I guess could be Mia, but I'm not sure about that. Also, Aiden is talking about Waltz who hurt Mia during their childhood and Waltz was the reason behind their separation. Now, Aiden is looking for Waltz so he can ask him about Mia and where she is. Next, Aiden is seen talking to this guy to whom he was asking about Waltz. Waltz is the main boss of Dying Light 2, just in case you didn't know. Also, the tattoo in his hand says Memento Mori, which means remember that you must die and you can find this graffiti everywhere you go in the city. Next, we see Hakon and Aiden doing parkour and there is something I have always noticed here and I like to mention it every time. This graffiti here looks like it says Gazi. Next, Aiden is seen talking to the peacekeeper guy and I feel like this guy would be important character because I've seen his poster in few promotional art. It's even there as a Walmart pre-order bonus. Moving ahead, we can see Hakon calling the city a paradise and God, I'm sure he will regret saying that in the future. Next, we see Sophie. She's from Survivor's Faction and would be giving you many missions like sending you out looking to clear some water towers and bring back water to the bazaar. Also, that guy in the back, you don't want to mess with him and I'm being serious. Also, holy moly, the fisheye has changed so much and here is a comparison. This is the old fisheye from 2019 demo and here is the new fisheye from 2022 trailer. I don't think I need to tell anyone what changes have been done here. It's funny they even changed the girls from the tables. Next, this is the moment that made everyone go crazy. So you can hear the person saying, who would have thought the end of the world would be so peaceful? I wish Crane could have seen this. But hey, he does confirm that Kyle Crane is dead. Yes, the following ending is canon and it was confirmed by Techland a long time ago. Still, we don't know what exactly happened to him, but he's dead, that's for sure. Also, I'll be making a separate video on this topic, so make sure you watch that and make sure you subscribe for that. Also, here's a beautiful look at the rooftop farms. Next, Aiden and Lawan could be seen traveling using the paraglider. Also, this cutscene is from the substation mission when you get the paraglider for the first time. Next, this scene sends chills and looks amazing. It's how peacekeepers operate or do something wrong. Well, this could be you. Like this guy stole water and was hanged for it. In the next scene, you can see the brother of Sophie being interrogated by peacekeepers. And by the way, his name is Barney. Also, I think the guy slapping Barney is called Aider or something. 
because his name keeps popping up everywhere and since Aider is a peacekeeper, people don't like him. That could be one reason why Sophie was asking him if he works for Aider or not. Also Aiden is like, no, I work for myself, not Aider. In the next scene, we can see this board with some missing people list in the back. Also, I hope it's not the teddy bear from Dying Light because that was scary. In the next scene, we can see a zombie breaking down the door and it looks like a new mutation covered in charcoal. These creatures were first spotted in a picture with Hakon. You can see them roaming around outside during day, which is unusual but kind of confirms that we still haven't seen much of the mutations. After seeing some great zombie actions, we are shown the first death in the game. And yeah, we don't know who that person is. Also, these two guys could be from Peacekeeper's faction because of the armor in their hand. But then again, you could kill a Peacekeeper and sell their armor, so that could be happening here. Also, remember earlier I told you Hakon will regret calling this a paradise? Look at this. Also, why does the Howler has such a high spawn rate? I see him literally everywhere. Well, hold up. Hakon, how is the paradise looking? I'm really sorry, but I feel like Hakon is gonna die in this game. I mean, see, he's a tutorial guy. He's a night runner who's training you, and yeah, we remember what happened to the last guy who trained Kyle Crane. He dead. So it looks like Zombie's got a piece of him, and he will most likely die. I mean, Aiden most likely tried saving him, but Lawan was like, no, it's too late. Run, Aiden, come with me. This scene here is from the mission when renegades raid the fisheye, also holy moly, that's really high. In the next scene, Sophie is talking to someone and you can see the part of the villager map in the background. Also remember, I told you not to mess with this guy. This man is so big and literally he can jump like that? Bro, I'm out. Next, we are at a car shop where we are fighting renegades and the weapon Aiden has seems to be modified with toxic effect. Now check out this scene, it looks so freaking cool. Well, it's a riverside peacekeeper base, I mean, you can see that man right there. Also, this man is being hanged in front of everyone and you can clearly see Matt standing there. Also, the girl that you see here was last seen in Fisheye during the raid from Renegade's mission. By the way, you can see some Peacekeeper rules and, you know, let's go through them. If you steal, your right hand will be chopped off. If you steal water, food or biomarker, then you will be hanged. If you kill someone, you shall die bound to a stake in full view. If you fail to display a biomarker, you will be banned. If you lie, you will be whooped 10 times. If you fail to assist someone threatened by an infected, then you will be banned. If you challenge a peacekeeper, then you shall be imprisoned for 20 days. Damn, these guys are nuts. But rules are rules. Next, we can see Aiden talking to Sophie, saying I know what that could be like. And I feel like Barney is dead. That's one reason why Aiden would say that to Sophie. But hey, that's a guess. Also, we can see Aiden holding a picture of Mia from a childhood birthday party. Also, this is the GRE hospital. In the next scene, the voice saying she trusted you and you failed her. I thought it's Frank talking, but no, it's actually Walt speaking to Aiden about Mia. Also, why does Barney get into trouble all the time? By the way, this scene is from the water tower mission where Sophie sends Aiden to clear the water tower and Barney seems to be the one who went first and well, we see what happened to him. Moving ahead, we can see this group and they are part of a small faction. There's gonna be many small factions that you'll come across during your gameplay. Also, you see the guy in the background? That guy is the one who comes for your rescue when a peacekeeper was attacking you. Next, Aiden is shown here during his childhood when he was being experimented on, but then Aiden says something, sometimes you gotta become a monster to stay human. And that, my friends, is an important line. I'll tell you why, but in a different video. But first, look at this. The first look at Waltz from Dying Light 2. He's the main boss, and please, don't think he's weak. Look at him. Aiden smashed his face and seems to be choking him, saying you tortured us, you were hurting me. Mia. Then you see Mia being experimented on the same way they did with Aiden. Now Matt seems to be talking to someone here, but holy crap. That is a 100% superhuman villain, and that's freaking confirmed. Waltz knocked them, or probably killed them, in one head. That too with great reflexes. Also, this person who died here, his name is Aglot, and if you spell it backwards, it's actually called Tolga. Yes, the Tolga from Dying Light. Also, Fatin is there too, but he's called Nitaf or Nitaf. Moving ahead, I just realized this guy was blowing up a peacekeeper base made on top of a windmill. Then we see a scene of Aiden being taken away from Mia, and boy, Waltz is back in action. First of all, he has got the GRE key. That is used to unlock all the substations in the city of Villador. Aiden had that with him, so this scene looks far later in the story. Also, it's crazy how Waltz remember Aiden and Mia, because there were so many kids, and, you know, to remember two people, there must be a good reason. So I think he's mutated because of the virus. He hasn't turned fully and can control it, and, well, use that enhanced abilities. Just look at him. It looks like he has been injecting himself with something. Also, guys, that's where the breakdown ends. You really 
really need to subscribe now because if you haven't, you're going to miss out a lot of videos because there's going to be so many videos coming up. And if you want to know more about Waltz, then subscribe. You're going to see another video coming up in a few hours. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, stay safe and stay human.